channel and a new art journal video. Today I am making the page you can see here and if you want to see how I did it then just keep on watching. And I'm using my Dilutions Creative Journal as usual and I'm quickly flipping through the pages here to find an empty page that I want to start working on. And as you can see the page I decided to work on has a lot of colors on it already. And I love to clean my stencils and stamps on empty pages and I find having something on the page makes it easier to start. Completely blank pages won't really give me the inspiration that I need to start creating. And I'm starting by adding some masking tape to the seam. And I'm doing this not only to keep any liquids from seeping through to the other pages, but also to help the journal stay together. After a while the journal pages get heavier from all of the ink and paints and the pages may fall out. But by taping the seam on most of the pages I reinforce it and the journal is more likely to stay together in one piece. The downside of using the tape is that it may be visible, especially if I'm just using spray inks on my page. But if I really don't want the tape to be visible, I can cover my whole page with gesso and I won't be able to see the tape anymore. Usually, I'm not really bothered about the tape showing though, and I think that it's more important that the journal pages doesn't fall out. For this page, I'm also adding some of the tape all over, and I think it gives it a nice texture. And I'm using this large 12x12 stencil from Prima and a blue dilution spray ink. All of the products that I'm using on this page are listed with links to various shops in the description bar below. So I won't be going into detail here on what colors I'm using and all that stuff. If you want to know the names of the products then just take a look at the supply list. And I'm spraying two different shades of blue and I'm also adding some perfect pearl mist to the page. I love to use perfect pearls on my pages since it gives such a beautiful sheen. When I'm finished with the stencil I'm quickly cleaning it by placing it on an empty page and I love the way the image turned out on the page that I cleaned it off on and I can't wait to do something with that page as well. And after I finished spraying I used my heat gun to dry the ink but I didn't really have the patience to wait for it to completely dry so I used a paper towel to soak up any wet parts. And then I used this fancy vintage looking stencil also from Prima and my white dilution spray ink. The white dilution spray ink will lighten the blue ink a bit and give it a bit of a ghosting effect. And I had hope that the ink would lighten the blue color a bit more than it did. So after I had dried the page completely I went in with my modeling paste and added that around the edges. I didn't want the modeling paste to have a clean and crisp edge and with my almost dried up modeling paste that is more or less impossible to achieve anyways. So I'm just quickly adding the paste to the stencil and I got a rough and worn look out of it. Then I quickly dried the paste before I went in with a stencil from the crafters workshop and a black spray ink. I wanted to darken the page a bit and I love the effect it gives when you spray a little bit of black ink. I don't want to add too much black ink since that will completely take over the whole page but I want to add a little bit of interest to it. And I also used a stencil from Dilutions to add the black ink since I thought that the small black dots weren't enough. When looking at my page I thought that the edges were a bit too light and they didn't really have enough color but I didn't want to go in with the black ink since I thought that would make it too dark. So I used a dark purple ink instead and added that around the edges of the page. I did manage to get a little bit too much ink on the center of the page but it isn't really possible to undo and remove the ink so I will just have to work with it. While cleaning my room I found these really old butterfly ghost shapes from Heidi Swap and I have loads of these in my drawers but I have never used them. But when I saw them today I just decided that I would try and incorporate them on my art journal page. And these are as I said really really old and you can't find them anymore. But since I'm only going to use them as masks you could use any die cuts you have. And I have added a few alternatives in the supply list below. And I placed the butterflies all around the page and I used a dark blue spray ink on top of it. Unfortunately the purple ink that I just sprayed was so dark that the blue ink didn't really show. And I didn't want to use a darker ink since that would have made my page almost black. So after cleaning the butterflies and drying the page I put them back and used my white gesso around them instead. This way I could lighten the page and have the butterflies dark. In other words the complete opposite of what I first intended to do but I think this worked out much better. The dilution spray ink is reactive with water and therefore the wet gesso sort of mixes with the ink behind it and I got a very light blue color instead of white. And if you want to avoid this problem you need to use some sort of product that will set the page and make sure that whatever you put on top won't react with what is underneath. And you could use some sort of setting spray or a coat of matte medium or similar. 
But I'm not doing this since I want all of my products to react with each other and I think it's more than okay that the gesso turned out to be blue. But I want it to be a little bit more white, so I am drying the gesso with my heat gun and then I put the largest of the butterflies back in place to add a second layer of gesso. And I also added gesso around the page with a palette knife to bring it all together. And I'm then making sure I completely dry the page before I continue. For my journaling I brought out these two sheets of letter stickers. These are also some old ones that probably isn't available anymore, but I have tried to find some alternatives for you in the supply list. And I'm going to have it say, let your dreams fly high, and I'm just adhering the stickers to my page. The larger ones are pretty thick and it won't be any point in trying to seal them with matte medium, since they are so dimensional. But even though they have adhesive on the back, I do need to secure them somehow. So I'm just taking my matte medium and adding that to the back of the letters. Matte medium is a very strong adhesive and it will keep the letters in place. For the smaller flat stickers I'm adding a thin coat of matte medium on top of it to secure them on my page. I then used the black cold pen to add some shadow around the smaller stickers and by doing this I make them look as though they are part of the page and not just stuck down and floating there. And as a final touch I'm using a regular black marker with a really broad tip and just making a rough black edge around the whole page. I think this makes a page look more finished and complete. The marker I'm using is some cheap one I got from the hardware store and I think these are normally used by construction workers and things like that and they smell really bad and are probably filled with all kinds of stuff that you don't want to use in scrapbooking but for art journaling and card making I think they are great but I'm sure there are plenty of better and healthier markers out there that you can use. And that finishes off my journal page for today. And as usual, if you like it, please give it a thumbs up. And don't forget to comment down below if you have any questions or suggestions on what I should be doing next. And I will be back on Thursday with a new card making video. And uh, thank you so much for watching and I will see you again next time. <laughs>